Bing! It's story time. Story, story, story time. Let's read a story time. Story, story, story time. I'm geek the story time. Story, story, story time. You and me is story time. Story, story, story time. Let's achieve hello and welcome to story time with me, Kayla. I hope you are enjoying your Wednesday and remembering to stay safe. Now, today we have another special Arthur feature, but this one is special because Storytime has yet again made its way overseas. Today we will be reading a book from Arthur Christiana Jackson, who is an Arthur from the UK. Isn't that exciting? I know! So, without further ado, the book we will be reading today is... Dun -dun -dun -dun. The Queen's Tea Party by Christiana Jackson, illustrated by Simone Douglas. You ready to see what this book is all about? Ready, set, let's begin. The Queen's Tea Party, written by Christiana Jackson and illustrated by Simone Douglas. Here we go. Shout out to her family and friends who have supported her through her journey. She is very blessed and grateful. Mom, I'm ready. I don't want to be late for school. Miss Sterling has an important announcement to make in today's assembly, yelled Chloe as she eagerly waited at the bottom of the staircase. Oh, I'm coming, yawned Mom. She quickly drank her fresh cup of coffee, picked up her car keys, made her way to the car, and drove Chloe to school. Chloe loved going to school. She loved playing with her friends, participating in her favorite class, maths, and attending the school discos. The one thing she didn't like was being made fun of and how it brought her down. From afar, Buttersnow School looked like a castle and it had many classrooms. It had an art room, a music room, a science lab, and a playground the size of a football pitch. When they got closer to Buttersnow Road, the school bell rang. Ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling. Chloe opened the door and bolted out of the car. She ran as fast as she could and sped through the tall gates just like a hare. When she reached the school front door, she met Miss Sterling walking towards the classroom. Oh, phew, I didn't miss the announcement, said Chloe as she caught her breath. Miss Sterling wore an unusual outfit. She wore a long dress. It was so long that the hem of her dress touched the heel of her shiny gold shoes. The students stared at Miss Sterling as she walked at the center of the classroom. Good morning, students. Today, I have an exciting announcement to make, said Miss Sterling as she adjusted her red cape tied around her shoulders and opened a bronze scroll held in her hand. The students stopped what they were doing and took their seats as they tried to figure out why Miss Sterling was wearing a funny outfit. They all leaned forward to pay close attention to every word Miss Sterling spoke. Next week, we will be celebrating the Queen's Jubilee by having a royal tea party in the school playground. It will be a non-school uniform day. The best dressed individual will win a special prize. The winner will visit the Queen for afternoon tea at Buckingham Palace. Please dress to impress and wear your best royal costume, said Miss Sterling. This is Miss Sterling's everyday outfit. Chloe's cheeks and eyes flushed as she heard Miss Sterling's announcement. This is the best news ever, whispered Chloe to Savannah. Savannah and Chloe were best of friends. They were inseparable. They sat together in all their classes, celebrated birthdays together, spent summer holidays, and had loads of sleepovers. I would love to win the competition to visit the Queen. It was my granddad's dream to visit the Queen. 
There was a time when Granddad stood outside the palace gates for almost four hours and tried to persuade the Queen's guards to allow him in the palace. But the guards would not respond, or even blink, said Chloe. Granddad mentioned there are over a thousand staff members working in the palace, said Chloe. I heard the palace has over 700 rooms and a secret tunnel that connects the palace to a beautiful garden. But how are you going to win? questioned Savannah. I will win by dressing up as the princess of Buttersnow School. Then it will be impossible for anyone to beat me. After I win, everyone will take a bow and curtsy as I wave to the crowd, said Chloe as she practiced her royal wave. Savannah giggled and cheered on Chloe. She loved supporting Chloe's ideas. <laughs> that is a great friend. <laughs> Later that evening, Chloe searched her room to find her favorite pink dress. She looked in her wardrobe, cloakroom, and a pile of her dirty clothes, but her pink dress was not there. Chloe searched under the bed. <gasps> there it is, said Chloe. The dress was behind a large, dusty cardboard box. Chloe tried on the dress. Oh no, the zip has broken, and there is a big hole on the side of the dress she said in shock. Chloe didn't know what to do. She sat on her bed thinking for what felt like an eternity. Then, after four minutes of staring into space, she had a fantastic idea. She would make her dress using her mom's colorful scarf. Okay, all I need to do is wrap the scarf around myself, pin the sides with a safety pin, and tie a beautiful bow. It should be simple, she muttered to herself. When Chloe finished making the dress, she looked in the mirror and saw the final results. Oh no, it's horrible, she, she exclaimed. The dress became loose and the bow began to untie itself. With Chloe's hope shattered, she sat there in silence thinking of a way to make her dream of winning the competition come true. She had an idea, but it would need the help of her mother. Mom! Please, can we go shopping this weekend? I don't have anything to wear to the tea party, pleaded Chloe. All right, my love. Yes, we can, replied Mom. The very next day, Chloe and her mom went shopping. They visited every clothing store on the high street. Mom saw a little boutique on the bottom of the road displaying beautiful dresses on the window. How about this small boutique, asked mom, while Chloe nodded in agreement. They went inside. There were many dresses on display. There were a short dress, long dresses, fancy dresses, and even unicorn-inspired dresses. The sight of them all made Chloe's jaw hung wide open. Chloe tried on a blue dress with the bottom of the dress shaped like a mermaid. Unfortunately, the dress was so long and tight that Chloe couldn't see her ankles. She tried on a purple feather dress. It looked similar to a peacock. However, the dress was too small for Chloe. Her arms could not fit through the sleeves. So she tried on an orange fluffy ball gown, but the dress was too big for Chloe. She looked just like a pumpkin. Chloe was worried that she would not be able to find the perfect dress. As they were about to leave the shop, Mom noticed a bright yellow dress behind the counter. It had beautiful green gems aligned at the bottom, which sparkled from a distance. How about this beautiful dress? asked Mom. Happy that her mom had spotted the dress, Chloe ambled toward the changing room and tried on the dress. It fitted her perfectly that they bought the dress and went home for tea. The following weekend, Chloe and her family traveled to Lincoln to visit their family. They left in the early hours of the morning and spent the day sightseeing. 
They visited the Lincoln Cathedral, took pictures of the swans swimming in the lake, and fed the horses that were running in the field where they had a lovely picnic. I'm having a lot of fun, said Chloe, realizing that she didn't want to go back home. The next day, they traveled back home in the late hours of the evening. Chloe was exhausted that she fell asleep in the car. When they arrived home, she went straight to bed. It was 8 a.m. Wake up, Chloe, you're gonna be late for school, exclaimed mom. As she quickly drank her morning brewed coffee, Chloe rushed out of bed, quickly ate her breakfast, and got dressed. Mom was busy loading the car and responding to her emails that she didn't see Chloe rushing out of the door and hopping into the car. Beep beep! Mom, please, can we leave? I'm already late for school, yelled Chloe from the car window. When they arrived at school, Chloe jumped out of her mom's blue sports car and ran towards the school entrance. She looked down and stretched out her arm towards the doorknob to open the door. Uh, huh? She gasped loudly. Uh -oh. oh no, I'm wearing my school uniform. I woke up so late that I thought today was our Monday show and tell assembly. I rushed out of the door so quickly that I forgot today we were celebrating the Queen's tea party. What am I going to do? cried Chloe. Chloe began to panic and did not want to be seen by the other students. She couldn't go back to the car as her mom had already driven off to work. Chloe tried to sneak into the building by tiptoeing through the side door near the classrooms. Hmm. However, it was too late as some of the students had seen her. The students all pointed and giggled at Chloe for wearing her school uniform. The palms of her hands became sweaty, her feet sunk into the ground, and her cheeks became bright red as she froze in embarrassment. Miss Sterling noticed what was going on. She dismissed the students and approached Chloe, who began to sulk. Hey, Chloe, don't be sad. You shouldn't worry or focus on what others are saying about your school uniform. We all have embarrassing and disappointing moments. When I was your age, I forgot to bring my permission slip to go on our annual school trip to the London Zoo. I remember feeling left out and embarrassed, but I didn't allow that to get to me. I chose to focus on the positive and not beat myself up about it. Even though you are wearing your school uniform, the most important thing is that you are here celebrating the Queen's Tea Party. Be confident in yourself, and don't be afraid to be yourself, said Miss Sterling reassuringly. Miss Sterling placed a small silver tiara on Chloe's head and wrapped the British Union Jack flag around her shoulders. Put a smile on your face and make your royal airs wave, said Miss Sterling. Chloe stopped soaking, wiped the tears away rolling down her cheeks. She adjusted herself, got herself together. Chloe smiled and walked to her classroom. Despite Chloe wearing her school uniform, she looked like the Princess of Buttersnow School. The students were all amazed at her transformation that they stopped making fun of her. At that moment, Chloe learned the importance of embracing. It was time for the big reveal at Butter Snow Primary School. The students anxiously waited and queued by the door. Behind the closed doors, Miss Sterling and the other members of staff transformed and decorated the school playground into a royal-themed tea party. There were six blue, white, and red balloons tied to the end of the tables, four Union Jack flags, two royal guards, and one red golden throne. The table had all kinds of delicious desserts and sandwiches. There were jam and clotted cream scones, cucumber sandwiches, quiches, squared jam sandwiches, carrot cake, lemon fingers, sprinkled biscuits, and apple juice laid out like a royal feast. 
When the playground was finished decorated, the members of staff opened the double doors and the students ran outside. Let the celebration of the Queen's Jubilee begin, they yelled with excitement. The students ate, played games, and danced all afternoon. Okay, students, gather round. It's time to announce the winner of the competition, announced Miss Sterling. The students cheered in excitement. This was a tough decision, and everyone has made a reasonable effort. However, there can only be one winner. The best dress is Savannah, declared Miss Sterling. Savannah was in shock. She didn't expect to win the competition. She wore a pretty turquoise dress with two bright colored hair accessories clipped in her hair. The students were all happy and applauded Savannah. Come sit on the throne and claim your prize, Savannah, cheered Miss Sterling. Savannah remembered how desperate Chloe wanted to win the competition and surprise her granddad, which she explained and asked Miss Sterling if she could bring Chloe with her to visit the queen. How nice of you, Savannah, very thoughtful. Yes, you can bring Chloe. I will speak to Mr. Campbell to sort the arrangements, replied Miss Sterling. A few minutes later, Chloe congratulated Savannah. Well done. You deserve to win, hugged Chloe. She was so thrilled to see Savannah win, but her eyes, her big brown eyes, that she was sad. Thank you, but I'm not going alone to visit the queen alone, replied Savannah. Chloe looked puzzled. What do you mean you're not going alone? She questioned. I know how much you wanted to win and surprise your granddad. So I asked Miss Sterling if you could come with me to visit the queen. And she said yes, replied Savannah. Chloe beamed with joy, excited she would be visiting the queen, but sharing the special occasion with her best friend Savannah. They both danced and played games all afternoon until it was home time. The night before their visit to Buckingham Palace, Chloe and Savannah had arranged a sleepover. They were up all night chanting, planning, and giggling about the big day. What if we get to ride in one of the Queen's carriages and feed the royal horses, said Savannah, as she jumped out of bed and pretended to pat down the horse. Or we stand on the royal balcony and wave to the crowd of people standing outside the palace gates, continued Savannah. Even better, what if the queen crowns us like the princesses of Buttersnow Primary School, replied Chloe. It will be one of the best days ever, replied Savannah. They continued chatting about the big day till they dozed off. Saturday morning, Savannah and Chloe woke up and got ready for the big day. They traveled to central London by three buses and two trains. When they arrived at Buckingham, the palace manager welcomed Savannah and Chloe. Hello, you must be Savannah and Chloe from Buttersnow Primary School. Please follow me to meet the queen, said the palace manager. The girls walked into the palace and was greeted by the palace staff. They walked into a hallway with huge portraits hanging on top of a grand white and gold staircase. It had a high ceiling with a crystal glass dome. The dome was as tall as a giraffe and as wide as a truck, similar to the vehicles that delivered food to the school in the morning. The palace manager took them for a tour of the palace. They spent time learning the history of Buckingham Palace and the royal family. In each room, a family portrait of the royal family hung on the wall, and beautiful crystal chandeliers hung at the center of every ceiling. They walked right in front of a sliding door where they could observe the city view. The view is breathtaking, muttered Chloe. They explored the palace gardens, fed the palace horses, and played with palace puppies. After having an adventurous time in the garden, Savannah and Chloe went back inside and met the queen who was sitting on her favorite chair reading the newspaper. Good afternoon, your majesty. 
I present to you Savannah and Chloe from Buttersnow Primary School, said the palace manager. The girls walked in and greeted the queen. When they walked into the room, they saw a long brown table in the middle of the room. It had trays of sandwiches, delicious desserts, and fresh strawberries and cream. The girls ate their yummy desserts and chatted all afternoon with the queen. This is the best afternoon tea I've ever had, said Chloe, beaming with delight. When Chloe got home, she wrote a letter to her granddad and told him all about her day at the palace. The end. Yes! I love how this book instills having that self-confidence. Because when you have self-confidence and self-love, you can go so many places. <laughs> Now you can purchase your copy of The Queen's Tea Party on Miss Christiana's website, www.christiana-jackson.com. And make sure to follow her on Instagram while you're at it, at The Queen's Tea Party. All right, K-Crew, it's your turn to dress up and have a tea party of your own. You can upload any pictures to your social media and make sure to use the hashtag The Queen's Party. I thank you all so much for joining me, but it's time to sing some goodbyes. Are you ready? Goodbye, 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 my friends, goodbye to you. I hope to see you again real soon. Be proud of all your work tonight. Now climb in a bed and sleep real tight on the count of three. Let's say goodnight. One, two, three. Goodnight.